Let's talk about wheel dishing. The wheel dishing is how well the rim is centered over the wheel hub. And when we're talking about that, we're talking about how well the rim is centered over the hub between the lock nuts, not the hub flanges. Okay, some of your symptoms of a wheel being out of dish is maybe your rim brakes are difficult to adjust or the wheel is not sitting centered in the frame itself. Um, and this could also cause some handling problems because your rear wheel might not track directly behind your front wheel. Now we're gonna check how well this wheel is dished. The first thing you need to do though before you check dishing, ideally is the wheel should be laterally true. Now you can either check the dish with a truing stand like this or you can use a wheel alignment gauge. First we're gonna check it with a truing stand. And what we do is we're gonna reference the rim to one of the caliper arms. We're gonna get that one caliper arm as close to the, to the side of the rim as we can, spin it around. Then we're gonna take the wheel out of the truing stand, flip it over, put it back in the truing stand, and then take a look at the distance right here to see how far off this rim is from that same caliper arm. If the wheel is just correctly, there should be no difference in the distance between the caliper arm and the rim surface. If there is a difference, that means your wheel is out of dish and you need to correct that, that dishing error. An easy way to measure the gap of, between the rim and the caliper arm is use an Allen wrench to measure the gap. This is a three millimeter Allen wrench and it barely fits between there. It fits pretty easily. If I use a four millimeter Allen wrench, it doesn't fit quite as easily. So that gap is somewhere between three and four millimeters wide. Our tolerance is one millimeter, so we really need to um, correct this dish error. Now on a truing stand, the way you can do this is you'll need to tighten up all the spokes on the side, on, on the side where the error is. So on this, on this one, we need to tighten up all of the drive side spokes and we can start at about a quarter turn uh, since we have about a four millimeter error or so. Um, now, if the spokes are already too tight on the drive side, you can also go to the non-drive side, in this case, and loosen the spokes about a quarter of a turn. One, if you tighten up the spokes or loosen the spokes, de-stress the wheel and recheck your dish after you've made the correction. Another way you can check the dish on your wheel is using a wheel alignment gauge. Now this one from Park Tool has adjustable feet and the way you're going to use this tool is you're going to set the feet on the rim, on the rim surfaces, and you have this adjustable, you have this adjustable reference bar right here. And what we're going to do Again, we're gonna set the feet on the rim surface, and then we're gonna move this adjustable reference bar down to the lock nut, okay, down to here. Now remember, don't go to the end of the axle, okay? Go to the lock nut itself. It's very important that you use the lock nut as a reference, okay? With the feet both firmly on the rim and the reference bar at the lock nut, lock that reference bar into place, Flip the wheel over and check the same thing with the feet on the rim surface. Check and see if that reference bar is actually touching the lock nut or not. If it's not touching the lock nut, you can either try to make that measurement right there, but it's a little bit easier to measure your dish error when the foot is off the rim a little bit. So we're going to reset the tool again down onto the lock nut on this side, lock it into place, flip the wheel over, put a foot on the rim, put the reference bar on the lock nut, and now you can see the gap over here between the foot and the rim. This is where your dish error is. Now you can measure this dish error with a vernier, set of vernier calipers, or you can use What's, what almost everybody has is a set of Allen wrenches, okay? Uh, I have a couple Allen wrenches right here. I'm gonna take my six millimeter Allen wrench first, 
and run it up underneath there. It's a pretty tight fit, but that six millimeter Allen wrench slides up underneath there real well. So we know it, there's, a, there's at least a six millimeter gap. I'm gonna use an eight millimeter Allen wrench, see if I can slide it up underneath there. Not really, you know, so that the gap is somewhere between six and eight millimeters. Now that's important because there's a formula that you can use to make this dish correction using this gap. And that formula is you take that, that gap measurement, divide that number by eight, and that gives you the number of turns on this side spokes that you need to turn every spoke. So in this case, six millimeters divided by eight is about three quarters. So every single spoke on the drive side of this wheel needs to be tightened up three quarters of a turn. Now remember, if the, if the spoke tension is already really, really tight on this side, you can do the same thing, uh, but loosen spokes on the non-drive side three quarters of a turn each to bring that dish error back into center. Okay, since we know that the gap is about six millimeters, we use that formula and we're gonna turn every spoke, we're gonna tighten every spoke on the drive side three quarters of a turn. Now, in this particular wheel, these spokes are already pretty tight. So I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna to go to the non-drive side and I'm gonna loosen every spoke about three quarters of a turn. So, like I said, you're gonna do every single spoke. We're gonna start at the spoke hole, okay, and work our way around from there. So, I'm gonna go to the first one, half a turn, another quarter of a turn. That's three quarters of a turn. Half a turn, quarter turn. Next one, half a turn, quarter turn. Half, another quarter. And the last spoke, half, quarter. Okay, after we have made the spoke adjustment, we're gonna recheck the dish with the wheel alignment gauge. So, loosen up on your reference bar, put both feet firmly on the rim surface, reference the bar down to the lock nut, tighten it up, flip the wheel over, foot on the rim surface, reference bar on the lock nut, and we look at this over here on the other side, and we have no gap. So our wheel now is perfectly dished. It should sit perfectly centered in the, in the rear, in the frame, and we're ready to go. If you tighten any spokes, make sure you de-stress the wheel before, before you put it back on the, on the bike, and check for any lateral or radial truing uh, errors that happen to be on the wheel after you've made this, after you've done this.